Okay, welcome everyone to our first video lecture for the tectonics course at ETH Zurich. This video series is mostly just an introduction to tectonics as a subdiscipline of earth sciences and an overview of some of the most important tools used to constrain tectonic histories. We'll be revisiting several of the topics uh, through future uh, video segments later in the course. The videos in this week's installments uh, or installment include firstly this one, which will focus on links between tectonics and other subdisciplines of geoscience. Then uh, the tools modules will include one on structural geology, one on metamorphic petrology, and one on geochronology, each delivered uh, by me. These will be followed by two from Sean on thermochronology and tectonic geomorphology. So let's get started. Um, so first, some basic terminology and distinctions between terms commonly used with tectonics. First of all, you've all taken structural geology, which has quite a lot of overlap with tectonics. But overall, this refers to the mechanical behavior, stress and deformation, and the kinematics or motion of rocks. And most structural geologists tend to work at the outcrop scale, supplemented by microscopic study. Tectonics then focuses on the large scale features of the outer part of the earth, and it includes not only an evaluation of structural features, but also the patterns of sedimentation, magmatism, metamorphism, and landscape evolution. And then commonly you've probably heard the term geodynamics, which focuses on the physics that drive mantle convection, uh, the physics that drive plate motion and deformation of earth and other planets. And Geodynamics also includes other forms of uh, planetary cooling, those that do not necessarily uh, involve plate tectonics at all. So these are three different hierarchies of earth science disciplines that are often considered together and that have a certain amount of overlap. There's also a difference in scale uh, between structural geology and tectonics. Um, structural elements typically focus on the less than 10 kilometer scale which here is referred to as local and is a scale where isostatic effects are negligible. Structural features include things that most of you have already learned about, such as faults, shear zones, folds, veins, foliations and cleavages, etc. Tectonics refers to regional scale features greater than 10 kilometers and scales where isostatic effects are generally important and includes features such as continents and ocean basins, uh, mountain belts or mountain chains, um, whole fault systems, sedimentary basins, big fault blocks, um, or volcanic provinces. And so I really love tectonics as a discipline because it actually draws from a wide range of earth science and even fringing earth science uh, subdisciplines. In the following slides, I'm gonna give some examples of these linkages but normally if we were in class together, I'd actually pose a question to you and ask if you can think of what some of the subdisciplines listed here uh, contribute to understanding plate tectonics. And so if you feel like it, you can pause the video here and see if you can think of some examples uh, that we can discuss later during our Zoom meeting and then uh, press play once you're ready. Otherwise you can just carry on with the video. So let's think first about links between tectonics and geophysics. These are very closely intertwined and geophysical data has been essential in outlining the evolution of tectonic plates uh, and their current configuration. Uh, geophysics is responsible, for example, for C4, uh, seafloor magnetic anomalies, uh, for imaging deep earth structures such as the lithosphere, asthenosphere boundary, uh, the transition zones within the mantle, the outline of descending or even ancient and extinct subducting slabs, and of course, the outer and uh, inner core of the general structure of the Earth. In addition to imaging, just in the last 40 to 50 years or so, tectonics has seen a lot of development in space geodesy, which provides real-time tracking of current plate motions. The image on this slide is a receiver function image showing the S-velocity perturbation associated with Cascadia subduction zone in the northwestern USA. It shows velocity contrasts or distinctions between red and blue, red and blue that are generated by uh, the upper plate MOHO, as well as contrasts that illuminate the subduction interface and the MOHO of the downgoing slab. 
The background image is also consistent with the other geophysical data set that's plotted here, which is seismicity, which are also constant earthquakes, which are concentrated in a double Benioff zone that defines the slab and in the upper plate seismogenic crust. Structural geology, as we'll talk about more in the next module, is of course a primary tool used in tectonics. It provides insights into the structures that accommodate plate motion, their kinematics, their rheological properties, and information on why deformation localized or why plate boundaries even formed where they did. This is an example from the San Andreas Fault system north of the city of Los Angeles. And we know the San Andreas Fault is a major structure and a plate boundary between the North American and Pacific plates. And yet the local structural geology suggests that in this region, it's actually a somewhat distributed fault system with several branching uh, lower angle thrust sense plays that bound the major mountain ranges in Southern California. So we can sort of tease apart the intricacies of this plate boundary by looking more locally at the structural features preserved there. Sedimentology also overlaps with tectonics, providing key information about paleo latitude of existing continents, also information on paleo topography, tell us about old extinct and ancient mountain belts. It can provide regional scale information on the time scales and degrees of uplift and subsidence, can also influence the tectonics of plates because sediments can create significant surface loads that affect uh, the flexure and isostatic rebound of continents, and we'll talk more about some of those aspects later. We'll talk specifically in this uh, segment about metamorphic petrology or in an upcoming module, but petrology is also essential to understanding pressure temperature conditions of tectonic events, uh, the sources of heat and melt, the processes and timescales of igneous province and placement, uh, the compositional evolution of the crust, especially in comparing uh, the evolution of crust in deep time uh, to the present day and trying to understand the conditions that led to the development of plate, of plate tectonics on the planet. And the closely linked discipline to petrology of geochemistry provides essential constraints on the various sources and sinks of things like carbon, water, and other volatiles. Geochemistry also includes uh, the field of geochronology, which we'll discuss in, in, a, in a module in this week's uh, section, um, so we can add this fourth dimension of time to tectonic reconstructions. Um, the growth and destruction of continents can be probed by geochemical proxies, as can Earth's heat budget um, over time. And finally, something that will likely come up again, particularly in some of Sean's lecture lectures, there's a very interesting potential interplay between climate and tectonics. Regional climate patterns inevitably at least partly control the processes of weathering and erosion, but of course they're also simultaneously sensitive to topography through, for example, or graphic effects. So there's potential for some interesting uh, positive feedback loops there. One controversial but fascinating example is for the Himalayan origin. Some workers there argue that the tectonics of the high Himalaya which includes the extrusion of deeply exhumed, very weak rocks from the upper plate uh, lower crust. So shown in purple in the upper right diagram. Some argue that that's driven primarily by the effect of the South Asian monsoon, with the argument being that the monsoon traverses northward across India, but upon entering uh, or encountering the Himalayan mountain front, it becomes diverted toward the Northwest and amplified substantially and leads to focused erosion that preferen preferentially exhumes uh, the deeper Himalayan crystalline crust. There are also several examples just discovered in recent years of more shorter term uh, weather patterns such as snow loading uh, or hydrologic loading as affecting uh, fault activity or earthquake recurrence intervals, for example. We'll discuss more examples of some of these interplays uh, later in the class, so really interesting. So finally, the last thing I want to mention in this segment is that ultimately tectonics is tracking the process of mantle convection. In other words, what the plates are recording is the very outer surface of this very special mode of planetary cooling known as plate tectonics. And the study of plate tectonics therefore provides essential information about the physics of this process and also provides some clues as to why Earth 
shows this unique form of planetary death, so to speak. And so this shows the overlap then with geodynamics and the physics of our planet. And this will certainly um, keep coming up again throughout the course that so we should be thinking of this as a whole mantle, plate tectonics as a whole mantle system, not just as a lithospheric one. So I'll end with this food for thought question. Um, I didn't discuss examples of interplay between Earth's hydrosphere or biosphere, but there are some uh, very interesting examples. And so if you feel like thinking about those or doing some research into them via Google Scholar, um, I'd love to hear uh, what you thought of or what you discovered um, during our Friday Zoom chat.